let's talk about something most people experience, but few are ever taught to understand. A topic surrounded by myths, morality, silence, and stigma, yet deeply rooted in biology. Masturbation. Is it dangerous, healthy, should you stop or do it more? What does it really do to your brain, your hormones, your body, your future? If you've ever felt confused, ashamed, or curious about your own habits, you're not alone. And you're not broken. I'm a urologist and pelvic surgeon, and in this video, we cut through the noise. No fear-mongering, no empty reassurance, just science-based truth. You'll learn what research says about frequency, function, and the surprising evolutionary reasons behind the behavior we often keep in the dark. And by the end of this video, you might just see your body and yourself in a completely different way. Let's rethink our most private habits with intelligence, compassion, and evidence. Throughout history, masturbation has been viewed through vastly different lenses. In some circles, it's condemned, a so-called weakness, a source of guilt, shame, or moral failure. Others regard it as something entirely different, a natural act, a normal part of human experience, and even essential to healthy sexual functioning. So which is it, a vice? or a virtue, harmful or healing. With so many varying opinions, one might expect people to abstain altogether, yet they don't. Across cultures, religions, and even across species, this behavior persists. And that, from a scientific standpoint, is profoundly interesting. When a behavior is this widespread and this enduring over time, it's not dismissed as a fluke. Instead, evolutionary biologists and neuroscientists ask a far more important question, why does this behavior exist? And what role does it serve? Modern research has worked to develop comprehensive biological models to better understand masturbation, especially from an evolutionary perspective. However, it's important to point out that much of this research has historically focused on male physiology and reproductive strategies. This is not because female masturbation isn't biologically or psychologically significant. It absolutely is. But it follows different patterns, engages different hormonal mechanisms, and therefore requires its own independent exploration. For today, our focus will remain on male biology. Contrary to earlier assumptions that masturbation may be a behavioral mistake or the byproduct of dysfunction, modern science increasingly supports the theory that it serves actual biological purposes. If a behavior is preserved through evolution and remains common in humans, and even in other animals, it likely exists for a reason linked to reproductive success or survival. But what could that reason be? In evolutionary biology, a trait or behavior is typically favored if it enhances an individual's ability to pass on genes to the next generation. This is where the science becomes truly fascinating. One prevailing hypothesis suggests that masturbation serves as a form of biological preparation, a mechanism by which the reproductive system maintains optimal function. By clearing out older sperm cells, for instance, masturbation might improve sperm quality, reduce DNA fragmentation, and even lower oxidative stress levels within the semen. In contexts where reproductive timing is critical, this might increase the likelihood of successful fertilization. Another compelling theory emphasizes competitive advantage. Research indicates that masturbation prior to sexual activity, especially when it doesn't result in full ejaculation, may help certain males shorten ejaculation latency during intercourse. In evolutionary terms, that could favor reproductive success especially in situations where mating opportunities are limited or competitive. In certain species, and potentially in our own ancestral lines, this may have allowed lower-ranked males to reproduce more effectively when their window of opportunity was short-lived. Ultimately, masturbation is not exclusive to humans. Many primates and other mammals engage in it. But among all known species, only one assigns moral, social, or existential meaning to the behavior, humans. And that sets us apart. Animals masturbate with no awareness of guilt or societal norms. For them, it's simply behavior. But human beings attach values to it, often conflicting ones. We can biologically crave it while simultaneously feeling cultural pressure to suppress it. That internal tug of war forms the essence of sexual shame, an emotional pathology that science alone may not cure, but can certainly help us understand. Okay, so this brings us to a common question, how often is too much? or perhaps more importantly, how often is healthy? Well, to approach this with clarity, we must separate physical health outcomes from psychological and emotional patterns. Let's begin with physical health, specifically prostate health. One of the most cited studies in this area is the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study, 
which examined nearly 30,000 men over several decades. The results were striking. Men who ejaculated 21 or more times per month showed a 33% reduction in their risk of developing prostate cancer compared to those with lower frequencies. That's not casual data. That's a statistically significant longitudinal finding built on over 230,000 person years of follow-up. While causation is always complex, the consistency of this correlation is difficult to ignore. Yet masturbation also profoundly affects the brain, triggering a predictable and repeatable pattern of neurochemical activity. Dopamine levels rise, cortisol and stress levels often drop, and the brain's reward circuits are activated. This is a natural pharmacological response, our own body's way of delivering a sense of relief or satisfaction. And because of this, masturbation isn't just a sexual act. It can become a coping mechanism. When life is lonely, stressful, or emotionally stagnant, some individuals may begin using masturbation as an emotional escape. Here, science offers a cautionary note, not a moral one, but a neurological one. Your brain's plasticity means it rewires based on repeated behavior. If masturbation becomes the default method of coping, rather than a conscious act of pleasure or self-connection, it may reinforce an escapism loop. Over time, desire becomes disconnected from the act itself. It devolves into habit or even compulsion rather than healthy expression. So, there is no universal frequency that defines excessive. What matters more is intentionality. Are you doing it because you want to or because you feel compelled to? When masturbation serves as your primary way to avoid dealing with negative emotions, anger, anxiety, or even boredom, you may start to see downstream effects on motivation, mood, relationships, and self-esteem. And here lies a particular psychological struggle that many men face. Culture, at times, tells them it's wrong. Neurobiology shows them it works, temporarily. That can lead to confusion, guilt, and secrecy, none of which are rational outcomes, but very real human experiences. Unfortunately, shame often leads to repetition and repetition, when unexamined, can deepen negative emotional patterns. Science can't remove cultural stigma overnight, but it can shed light on the biological processes at play. It can also empower men to understand the feedback loop their brain may be caught in, and begin to step outside of it with greater awareness and self-compassion. So, so, is masturbation good or bad? That's the wrong question. Biology doesn't traffic in morality, it operates through function. Culture, on the other hand, isn't concerned primarily with biological efficiency. It cares about meaning, values, and identity. And navigating the space between those two forces, biological drive and cultural expectation, is part of what makes being human so complex. As a man, you walk that bridge daily between what your body naturally seeks and what your environment teaches you to suppress. That's not weakness, and it's certainly not failure. It's an invitation, a challenge to understand yourself more deeply, not by fighting your instincts, but by reflecting on them with clarity and compassion. If this message helped you take even one step toward reconciling your biology with your beliefs, then this conversation has already been meaningful. You deserve clarity, not confusion. Understanding, not shame. And that's what science, at its best, can offer. You are not defined by your urges, but you are empowered by your understanding of them. When science replaces shame, you gain more than knowledge, you gain self-respect, and that changes everything. Masturbation isn't good or bad in absolute terms. It's part of your biology. But how you relate to it, whether it controls you or you control it, that's something you can shape. With awareness, with intention, and with the right information, you can step out of the loop of guilt and confusion and into a more informed, more confident, and more grounded version of yourself. If this video helped you take even one step toward that version, know that I'm honored to be part of your journey. Subscribe to this channel for clear, compassionate medical insight, where your health is never judged, only understood, 